Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part three of my tutorial on how to make a featured content slider for any website, including a WordPress website. At the end of the last tutorial, what we had was this basic featured content tool you see here on the screen. And a lot of people would say, you know what, this is enough. If I want to offer any additional features, I'll just charge people for that. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to continue to add additional features to this featured content slider. As you can see here, now everything rotates automatically, and you can also see I can still click back on these little individual images, and they're going to stay there, but then the rotator is just going to continue onwards from that point on. And also I got rid of the little sort of kludgy animation where it's skipped. Now everything is nice and smooth, and in this tutorial, not only am I going to show you how to make this exact thing on the screen, remember this isn't the final feature content tool. This is just the beginning, but I'm going to show you exactly how to make all this in this tutorial. All the code is in the under bar. Now all of the changes that we're going to be making are in the featured underscore content.js file. I'm going to walk you step by step through this guy and show you exactly what's going on. And this is what it looked like the last time we saw it. And along the way in this tutorial, I'm also going to teach you a ton of things in regards to how to use jQuery in really neat ways. We can actually leave these first two parts alone inside of this featured content.js file. But what we're going to do here, down here on line 15, is we're going to get rid of this minus one because I fixed a little issue that I had there. Now what this guy's going to do is it's not only going to return the first child thumbnail image location inside of the featured content tool, but it's also going to return the total number of images. That way I can use any number of images and this guy's just going to keep on trucking. So that's what we're doing with this guy. And then we're going to have to add a new line of code, so I'm going to create another variable. And what this guy's going to do is it's going to track the current featured content that is being displayed on the screen. So we're going to start off with it being first child thumb because that is the index, the first thing that we're going to be featuring. And that's all you got to do right there. And this guy's going to change later on in the code. And then right down here, after we add the selected class to this image, I'm going to add a click event to all the images so that I can automatically catch any clicks on any images inside of this tool. I'm going to target anything inside of the NTT thumbnail frame that is an image. And I'm going to say, if it is clicked on using the bind function, and then typing in click, I want this function to be called. And I'm also going to show you how to create your own events here in a minute. Then on top of that, I'm going to show you a real neat way to continually execute a function over and over again. So we're going to use set interval. What set interval does is it executes a function for you within a certain period of time. But what we're going to do is we're going to tell it to continually execute a function. Let me scroll this up. And that function is going to be called rotate images. And then I'm going to use the arguments callee function, which is a not often used function, which is really cool. And what it basically does is it returns the function that called this function over and over and over again. In essence, what it does is it continually says execute this function rotate images over and over and over again. And then we're going to define inside of here that we want that to be called every four seconds or 4,000 milliseconds. So that's another neat little way to execute a function multiple different times. So now we go to create the function, rotate images. And if at any time you don't understand what I'm doing or I miss something, just leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll answer any questions you guys have. So now I gotta grab the image that lies in the same zero base position as the value of the rotator index, which is going to start off with the first item that I have in my featured content slider. I defined this above. So NTT thumbnail frame, just so you remember. This is NTT thumbnail frame. This class surrounds every single image that is on my page. So this is the guy that I'm targeting right here. And what I'm gonna do with this EQ function inside of jQuery is I'm gonna say I want every single one of those divs of that type of class to be grabbed. And more specifically, I want to grab the index that is equal to rotator index. Remember, this is how you're able to put a variable inside of here by opening and closing those quotes. And then I'm going to say I want the image that's associated with that. So that's exactly what's going on there. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to call the trigger function to trigger a click event on this image that I just grabbed here. And then what's that going to do? That is going to say call the change featured content function because this has just been clicked, even though it necessarily hasn't been clicked. And then the change featured content is going to change the featured content that's on the screen currently. And then now I'm going to change the value of rotator index based off of the current featured content item. I'm going to say if it's less than or equal to zero, 
I want to start over at the first element that is on the screen. And this is going to be the highest value for all the images that are currently on the screen. So that means if there's five images on the screen, this number is going to be equal to five. And then I want to say else. If it's not, I want to decrement to this variable. And I want to close that off. And then I don't need this guy anymore because I'm just not using this the way that I previously decided that I was going to use it. I'm going to instead create a function called change featured content and the event is still going to be passed. And then here, I'm going to shut off the linking ability just like we had before. And let me scroll this up. I'm going to remove the selected class from this div and this image. And also I'm gonna set the opacity to 100% for these divs and these images. But I'm also going to add the selected class to the div that surrounds the image. And quite simply how you do that, remember this is a reference to whatever has been clicked. So this is gonna be the image that was clicked. So if I wanna reference the div that surrounds that image, I just call parent and put a dot inside of there, and then that's done. So now they're both the div and the image inside of the div are going to have the class selected, which is gonna help me out later. And then I'm gonna to continue to scroll down and just touch up a couple things here. This guy before was kind of jerky and I decided that I don't like the way that this works. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna come in here and change the way that these guys work. I'm still gonna be operating on the featured pick, which is the big pick that is on the screen. It's gonna be this guy. This is the one that I'm gonna be playing with here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a smooth animation. And how I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna change multiple attributes using jQuery, meaning I'm gonna change the source attribute, I'm gonna change the value, and I'm also going to change the style. I'm gonna set the opacity to zero. And this is going to keep the source from changing and then being deleted and then coming back slowly. And that's what we did before and it looked terrible. So I'm getting rid of that and I'm gonna close that off. So that's how you change multiple different attributes inside of jQuery. And the only other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and instead of this opacity increasing from 40% to 100% over one second, I'm going to change it to two seconds. And that is all I needed to change to create a much, much, much better featured content tool. And you may not have noticed, but I got rid of the arrows that are on here because somebody sent in a comment and said they're stupid. Why would I even have them on there? And I agreed. But then I thought, how can I add more functionality to this guy? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have these arrows, whenever they are clicked on, actually bring in a whole brand new set of featured images and featured content. So I'm going to plan that in a future tutorial. And then, of, of course, we're going to eventually convert this whole entire thing into a WordPress plugin. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. Otherwise, till next time.